Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3 Ruined World. In the last recording session, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to keep exploring an upper exile or finally move out to the surface. But you may notice I am still near New Kotra. There's a couple of encounters here that I'd rather do before I get hilariously overleveled for them. So I am going to explore upper exile a bit more today. And apparently that means running into some enemy Nephilim. Okay, I am getting Steven a couple of more levels here and there. So he is slowly getting more competent at the combat. You walk along a narrow land bridge between two bodies of water, fresh to the south and stagnant to the north. At one point, you stumble upon a large pack of rats drinking from the North Pool. Normally, rats would flee you. These don't. Ooh, vapor rats and mung rats. A little bit stronger than your standard cave rat. Let's see if I can get my scry on. Vapor rat breathes gas, is smelly. Mung rat gets dead before he can even do anything thanks to Pearl. Good job, Pearl. And mung rats are just immune to poison. And also have a good chance of poisoning me. There, see? Steven can actually hit things now. Amazing. Now, will being cursed so many times affect Garnet's ability to flame broil things? No, it does not. You clean your blades, relieved you have ridded Upper Exile of another pack of huge, ravenous rodents. Unfortunately, you find no reward. Just the satisfaction of a good deed well done. Huzzah. There is more stuff to the north. But of course I have to go and explore the odd little corners of Exile. Or Upper Exile. I cannot get in there, can I? Hmm. How annoying. I can get in here, wherever here is. At first glance, it looks like all this small cavern contains is huge mounds of jumbled rubble. A closer look reveals that some of the rubble heaps to the northeast are actually poorly disguised stone huts. Lithe, feline shapes walk among them. Hello, friends? You manage to get close to the Nephilim settlement without being seen. The chilling sight of the armor of several exile soldiers sitting empty by their cooking pot confirms your suspicions. These Nephilim are bandits, and worse. There aren't that many of them, and you have the advantage of surprise. You may be able to rid Upper Exile of these butchers. Hmm. <laughs> you charge. You don't get far before the guards raise an alarm. This isn't a very large camp, but there are enough Nephilim here to give you a good fight. Regular Nephil, archers, shamans, and a chief. Chief I do not yet have in my bestiary. Eh, he's a bit tough. He's about on the same level as me by now. May want to do some blessing and hasting of people. May also want to do some fireballs.
this would be a little easier if I had more casters. Oh, crap. Garnet is a bit low on health. I have no healing potions on Garnet. She does have a Wand of Vorb, which I'm pretty sure is a bad idea to use right now, if I recall from Exile 2. Also, I picked up a Sapphire and a plain old crystal from Geekra the other day. Sapphires are useful for casting magic maps. Plain crystals are good for selling for a pittance, really. I know what I could do instead of fireballing some more is I could slow the chief who's right next to Garnet. I could try putting him to sleep. Still alive. Okay, now let's, let's actually heal Garnet this round. going to have to start this combat again. Okay, let's try this again, hopefully with slightly less dying on my end. And of course got to scry that guy again. Somehow I'm still alive. Let's keep that hot streak going. <laughs> okay, one shaman down. Oh, you summoned gremlins, you suck. I should probably curse the chieftain. Oh, what? Garnet's out of... Spell points again, uh, but gremlins are such a good fireball target. Huh. 
no throwing skill and I can still hit something. I'd rather not put Garnet in melee range, so only one thing to do with her. Throw lawn darts. Throw lawn darts at the lawn gnomes, I mean gremlins. Let's try this again, hopefully with a bit less dying on my end this time. Actually, no, let's not start off with fireball, let's start off with a bit of haste. Shaman casts weak summoning and summons more Nephilim. That makes more sense than what usually happens, I guess. Alright, fireball time. And a wonderful time it is. Give Amethyst some blessing too. Okay, Chieftain's down, Shaman's down. I should be able to win this time. Now, I'm not sure in this game if summoned creatures will give me XP or not. Apparently they do! Stone Axe, I think I will leave that one behind. Necklace, I will take. The remaining Nephilim scatter. The bandit's crude village is yours to explore. You explore the crude village. 
you easily decide to leave the food behind. Fortunately, they have a bit of gold and other goods. In addition, there is an intriguing bone necklace around the neck of the chief. Which is mine now. That's probably a fang necklace. One of the classic exile lesser artifacts. I don't think there's anything else hidden in this corner. Nothing hidden in there. Possibly something in here. This narrow, twisting, winding corridor is lined with the discarded skins of large insects, and filled with the sound of alien chittering. You constantly feel you are under the gaze of multitudes of insectoid eyes. That sounds like Tetrax, and I am not sure I want to deal with that right now. Not until Garnet gets at least one more fireball's worth of spell points. Eh? Well, that's a weird sweet secret passage. In this tiny, remote corner of the caves, you find a small, sparkling fountain. You suddenly feel very thirsty. I suddenly feel like saving my game. You find the water incredibly refreshing. You all drink some, and walk away feeling highly energized. There's no apparent difference. Well, perhaps I'll get a chance to see if that fountain does any healing. Now, I've been leaving some potentially good loot behind lately just because of the weight concerns. Yeah, looks like a free heal. Cool. Even if it is a pain in the butt to get to. You know what? Oh, oh, Nephilim and also what I assume is exile soldiers. An exile patrol approaches to warn you. We'd watch out if we were you. There's been a lot of Chitrax wandering around these parts. They tell you to keep an eye open for bugs and leave. Ew, Chitrax. But also, we find New Formolo. New Formolo is clearly a city still under construction. The walkways are only partially done. Many of the buildings are incomplete, and everything finished looks brand spankin' new. Can I talk to any of the guards? No! Except maybe this one, because this one looks different. Yes. Commander... Zhivanovskaya? Forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. This woman is middle-aged, but walks with the stride and confidence of a warrior half her age. The steel sword at her side looks well-worn. My name is Zhivanovskaya, but you can call me Commander Zhivanovskaya. I oversee the defense of this town, and believe me, there have been nothing but troubles. Well, it's bad enough that there's ten Chitrax out there for every one of us, hungry for blood. But then there were problems with the sliths they sent to make up half our workforce. Big evil bugs, you don't want to know. Oh, we know. We know. Now don't get me wrong, I got no problems with those lizards. They just shouldn't be here. They need lots of heat. And if we sent people out to forage stuff to burn, they'd be eaten by Chitrax. Plus, they're terrible laborers. The lizards only started making buildings a few years ago, and they just don't have the knack. Plus, they keep insisting on putting statues up everywhere. They refuse to work unless they can make statues. She spits in irritation. It's some religious thing. They can't make a city without statues. Look, I got nothing against them personally. They just shouldn't be here now. Yeah, 
Okay. So she got 99 problems and she tracks for most of them. There is a short man with short hair on his hands and knees here, cementing stone floor tiles. He looks up at you and cocks his head. I'm McCulloch. Welcome to my workplace. I am assembling a floor, as you can see, alone. Very rewarding work. I'm good at it. You see, someday it will be walked on constantly. I can relate. Mm-hmm. Yes. Normally there would be a slith named Asoth helping me. However, it is absent, as you can see. Normally, one might be inclined to take this as evidence of the laziness of Slith Zerakai, especially considering how often it has been happening lately, and how lousy the work they've been doing has been. However, I'm sure you wouldn't come up with the idea that the Sliths are just big dumb lizards. That wouldn't be a conclusion we would come to, right? Mm hmm. Of course, we enlightened types have to stick together. So yeah, he's not having a good week. We do have at least a couple of statues. Lizard is just a lizard. And I'm sure that some of the humans think that statues are fine, but they should go up after the buildings. You are by several huge rock pillars, which are being knocked apart to get stone to build new formula. Rubble from the huge stone formations is stacked all about. It must have taken great effort to knock it all loose. From among the huge rock pillars to the west, you would swear you can hear a soft chittering noise. Hmm. Do I dare to investigate? Oh, what the heck. I see webs. I see spider. Not a friendly spider. Aw. And now I'm webbed. This was surely a great idea. Okay, that was easy. I also see a skull. These are the mortal remains of someone who was once alive, but is now dead make an interesting conversation piece. I'll just put you right back over here. Well, spiders aren't so bad. I can deal with spiders. Several of the insects that infest this area of Upper Exile have snuck back here. It would seem they are waiting back here to ambush whatever humans they can. It would also appear that the humans they've been waiting for are you. Oh no, Chitrak! Also, weird effect up there. Hello, what's all this? A null bug! Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I, I can't describe it because it's in an anti-magic field. Null bugs generate anti-magic fields. I do not like them. Ag. Tracks are annoying, but at least they aren't poisoning me. Good 
couldn't remember if I got that in my bestiary already. Sometimes I want things dead more than I want Steven to be the one to kill them. Ah, uh, dead body. Dead body with pretty decent gear on it, actually. Anybody have 80? No, I don't. Fui. That shield probably isn't that much better than what I already have. Still can't carry the studded armor, though. Yeah. Just enough. Next time I get training, I'm going to have to start bumping up people's strength. And yes, I do have to search every crate and barrel I come across. Or a lot of them, anyway. Nothing interesting in any of these. Okay, we've got one intact building here. And perhaps another one here. Gray mold? Seriously? I don't know where I'm keeping it, but I'm taking it. This sign is still blank. Looks like we found the tavern. We meet a tall, thin, awkward-looking man with curly, dark hair. He is polishing a rough bar that seems to have been set up rather quickly. He has a high-pitched, nervous voice. I'm McDonald. Who are you? I take care of the food here. That's all I do, so don't get mad at me if anything goes wrong. Lord knows everything is messed up, and I didn't do it. Everything's behind schedule. Everyone hates each other. Bugs keep attacking. It's not my fault. Some of the humans really hate Sliths. They don't want to work together. I have no problem with the lizards, and I wish they could just all get along. We were supposed to have all the buildings up by now. That wasn't my job. It wasn't my fault. Those Chitrax have been moving into every cave we can get into, and they grow big and mean. They keep walking up and chomping down on us. Two up here for every one we kill. It's a big mess. Hmm. We can buy food for exorbitant prices. Eep. Also hearty meal, iron rations, and odd avian meat. I haven't seen any chickens here or any other kind of birds. There is a short, stout woman sitting at the bar working on her fifth mug of mushroom beer. She looks very uninterested in your presence. McKinley, okay? She grunts. I'm a laborer here. She turns to you, annoyed. Look, I'm trying to drink here, okay? You want my time? Give me a drink. You buy her another beer. Okay, let's make this quick. We're building new formula. It's a pain. 
We keep getting attacked. What do you want to know? There's a formalo down in exile. Big city. Never been there. I'm from Darman myself. That's another town down in exile. She takes a deep swig of beer. Well, you try to build a city from scratch, in the middle of nowhere, with a bunch of dumb lizards to help, while being attacked by bugs all the time, and see how much fun you have. Chitrax. They're big, nasty bugs. Chitrax, they're called. They snuck into Upper Exile with the humans somehow. That's all I know, okay? Let me get blasted in peace. Okay, then. This woman is surprisingly small and delicate to be working in a construction site in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by hostile monsters. She seems perfectly at home, however. She bows to you. Greetings, fellow exiles. She takes a delicate sip of her mushroom beer. I spend most of my time on watch duty. I have sharp eyes and a long attention span. I can spot a chitrack from twice as far away as anyone else. That can be the difference between life and death. Every moment counts when a chitrack shows up. Everyone needs to be brought inside, and the guards need to go out. A second too slow, and we might lose a worker. And nobody wants that. Nasty, nasty creatures. They used to only live down with the Vanatai. Now they're spreading everywhere. I hear someone brought a few of them up to exile as an experiment, and they escaped and spread everywhere. At least that's what I heard. Is it true? Beats me. At least they keep me in a job. At that, she raises her mug and takes a hearty swig. Somewhat healthier attitude there. There's a young man with short hair and a broad smile sitting at the table. He seems very friendly. Hi there, I'm called Foley. He turns his smile to you, setting you at ease. Well, you know, I'm here to help build things. Oh yes, I'd absolutely love to talk about what I spend all day doing. I would really, really love that. I can't get enough of it. His voice drips with sarcasm, but his expression remains perfectly open. Oh yes, I'd absolutely love to talk about what I spend all day doing. I would really, really love that. I can't get enough of it. His voice drips with sarcasm, but his expression remains perfectly open and friendly. Maybe I want to hear about somebody else's life. Like maybe I want to hear about your adventures. He pauses. You know, come to think of it, I don't want to hear about your adventures. I want to talk about other things. His smile remains undisturbed. My urge to punch him in the face is rising. Oh, all sorts of things. Just nothing I want to talk about with you. He pauses, still smiling. Wait a moment. I know something about magic. No, I don't really. I'm just trying to make conversation, you big idiot. All of the burly workers laugh at you. You keep from killing him. You meet a tall, solidly built worker. He's drinking mushroom beer from a slender glass. I'm Thompson, but I answered a buddy. I've been doing a lot of surveying. That's mainly what I'm up here for. He looks you up and down, and sighs. Well, the cave's around here, mainly. Looking for places to build and resources, and all those other useful things. Foley and I have been going north lately. Sweet guy, you ought to go chat with him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lots of little caves and tunnels up there. Very lovely and private. We can't guess what treasure we might find. But of course, all we'll find are big piles of rocks. What else around here? Well, you might find some more chitrax or other horrible things. This room is unused. It's unpleasant smelling, moldy, and has a pool of icky water in the corner. It also has a large unused bed in the corner, and lots of floor space. You could rest here, if you were desperate. I don't think I'm desperate, but... Any excuse to show off a new message, right? You spend a long, uncomfortable night, filled with strange dreams and much tossing and turning. The dampness of the room seems to get everywhere. When you wake up the next morning, you feel rested, but only a little. You also feel cold, moist, and uncomfortable.
But at least I do feel fully healed. Ooh, stuff. The counter in this room is covered with all manner of building tools. Hammers, picks, and shovels. Very little of it is useful to you. We also got lamp, torches, and a metal bar, and I'm not going to take any of it. I could totally get away with stealing, because no one is nearby and I could always close the door. But I don't wanna. Mall of New Formolo. Still under construction. Ooh, ooh, shopping mall! Unoccupied stores. And one occupied store. Hmm, you've got a little secret compartment back here. Rock, garbage, stick, and bolts. Hey, it's too heavy to carry. I have gotten the request to show off even more items. I think I did describe the rocks. Yeah, if things get really desperate, you can wing it at someone's head. Behold the mighty stick, a one-handed bashing weapon. The ultimate in low-tech weaponry. This is a stick, which was, at one point, part of a tree. If you get really desperate, you can conk someone over the head with it. Seems to be a running theme at this stage of the game. Garbage! Ah, the debris of society. Useless in all ways, and smelly to boot. I love that Jeff went through and gave descriptions for all these random items. It would have been so easy to just ignore the garbage. And I've lost the smith. There you are. You meet a big, burly slith, skin dry from the heat of his forge. I am Dossor. Welcome to this shop. I am the blacksmith for this new city. I run the first shop here. This is the first working shop in Formolo. It is necessary because the people here need metal goods to build the city. Also, I provide a good place for sliths to come and meet. We sliths were sent here by our people as a peace gesture to humans. It was a very difficult idea. It is too cold for us here, except in my forge. The humans do not like us, and we are ill-suited to the work. When the city is done, most of us will return home. But alas, few will have anything happy to say about the experience. Little peace came from this. Hammers and axes and weapons to fight monsters. I also have weapons for purchase by passers-by, like you. I know not. Apologies. He's got decent stuff. And I'm quite certain that in the Avernum remakes, there's one or two more slits around that I can actually talk to. Here they are. I might have missed them in this game because they're just sleeping in bed. Haha. -ha. There is a muscular slith Zerakai sitting on this bed. It looks like it's meditating. When you approach, he comes out of it and looks at you with unblinking eyes. I am Asoth. Greetings to you, humans. His face remains expressionless, but his eyes are filled with fury. 
I was sent here by my people as a gesture of peace to humans. I help them build this city. We Sliths are not used to buildings. Caves are our natural homes. We only started making buildings not long ago, and we are unused to the work. We only started making building not long ago, and we are unused to the work. The humans do not understand this. Maybe many humans are good, so our leaders say. But humans here call us lazy and stupid, and insult us as we work. And lately, they keep it always so cold. We Sliths are, as you call it, cold-blooded. We need much heat, but the humans do not create it. There are fewer fires now, and we are always cold. This only worsens the problem. When we are cold, we slow down, and they call us lazier, and think we deserve less heat, which makes us slower still, and so it goes. We complain, but they do not listen. Oh, we long to return to our home. We will share with our leaders the other side of their beloved humans. Yeesh. There is a slith curled up here. It's clearly miserable and almost completely dormant. When you speak to it, it raises its head weakly and looks at you. Ska, it whispers. It sighs. A long, drawn-out hissing sound. Always so cold here. Can't do what they want. Its voice is very quiet. You have to struggle to hear it. Cutting stone. Stacking stone. Making walls. Not good work for a slith. I make statues. Statues are noble things for a slith to build. Remember our ancestors. Create beauty. I wish to go home now. A dreamy look appears in its reptilian eyes. However, it says nothing. Always so cold. They won't build fires. In Nass, we always had fires. Our beautiful city, far below. Mm -hmm. So, again, going back to the remakes, I know Avernum has a quest where I can help the Sliths out a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if I can do it in this game. Probably have to find the captain to do so. Yeah, I don't think I get that particular side quest in this game. I know that in the remakes, I can go out and kill a whole ton of Chitrax, and eventually I kill enough that the town of New Formolo feels more secure, and can send people out to forage for firewood, and make the Sliths a little bit warmer and happier. If I can trigger that quest in this game, I haven't quite figured it out. Also, I haven't actually seen any Chitrex so far just wandering the caves. Here's a swamp. And more swamp. Do I really feel like dealing with this right now? I can come back later. Bleh. Is that an ogre? That is an ogre. I'm going this way now. <laughs> I 
ran into the ogres. This will surely end well. Okay, not too bad as long as they don't have any mages with them. relatively painless. But I'm going back to known territories. I'm also going back to get that boat that I heard about here. He grunts and spits, then he takes your money. The boat's around here somewhere. Help yourself. Don't mind if I do. And once again, can only pilot the boat in the cardinal directions, not diagonals. Caution! Swamp! This is possibly the most useless sign you've ever seen. <laughs> I sure am glad I didn't have to trudge through the entire swamp to get to that one. Here's Geeker again. Which we can actually enter from the waterside. And which seems to have an odd little tunnel coming in here. First, you think you might have found one of the vanitized crystal souls. When you get close to it, however, you think you see words under its blue surface. Look closer. When you bend close to the crystal, odd magical runes begin scrolling rapidly up its surface. You concentrate hard on them. After a time, they repeat, and repeat again. However, your magical knowledge is inadequate to decipher them. Oh man. I'll have to come back here later. Maybe when I've got 4th level priest spells I can cast Cure All Poison. How do I get in here? Surely there's a way. Is one of these rocks fake, maybe? Aha! When you steer your boat close, you notice that the rocks to the west have a narrow open path between them. With care, you could steer your boat through it. There we go. Neatly in the center of this remote island, Surrounded by rows of cultivated mushrooms, you find a small stone hut. Odd smells come from within. Enter it. As you approach the door, it opens, revealing a withered old woman with long, snowy white hair. What are you skulking about here for? She chuckles. I am Silverlock. Come in, come in! Everyone in exile has heard of Silverlock, master alchemist and potion maker. You enter, and after being served tea and biscuits, she offers to show you the goods she has for sale. Do you shop? Of course I do. Whoo, we can get knowledge brew here after I get way more gold. Also brew of iron skin for 
much more durability. Brew of Battle, which does probably a pretty strong blessing. A rough glass bottle containing a truly nasty smelling fluid. Brew of Leaf, which will make me lose some experience points. A corked slender vial containing syrupy red liquid. It almost, but not quite, looks like blood. And then in the more affordable section are potions of bliss and clarity. Bliss does major bliss and healing. And clarity will cure dumbfounding, which is quite useful if it's your main priest that gets dumbfounded. This tiny vial contains a minuscule amount of clear fluid. You have to squint to see it. Good to know about. We'll not be buying anything today. We'll in fact be returning to Fort Emergence. And perhaps beyond in the next episode. Until then, have a good one everybody.